Hello, hello, it's Echo. Welcome to another glorious video. This one is sponsored by Wix. Today we're going to be talking about e-commerce, or in other words, selling stuff online. Personally, I really don't like the word e-commerce because it sounds like something that has a very high barrier for entry. Selling stuff online does not. So this video is specifically made for artists on the internet, because being an artist is a very unique skill set. So in case you haven't noticed, I'm an artist and a YouTuber, both things that I have tried very hard to hide. These are both things that cover two of the most important parts about e-commerce, which is having a product or something to sell, and marketing. Marketing sucks. These are both things that are very reliant on each other, because it doesn't matter if you have, like, the greatest work in the world, if you can't market yourself, no one's gonna see you. On the other hand, if you have really good marketing and a really bad product, you can still make it work. You want whatever you're selling to be really incredible, but marketing is as, if not more, important than whatever you're selling. Which kind of sucks, but that's the world we live in. It's like when you have a yard sale, it doesn't matter how great the stuff you're selling is, if you don't put signs that say yard sale with a big cheesy arrow pointing in the direction of your house, you're not going to sell anything. One of the ways that Wix helps with that is that it can allow you to put together a central hub or a central catalog of everything you're selling so that you can send people to a single website. Once again, this video is sponsored by Wix. If you would like to create your own e-commerce site, you can go to wix.com slash echo store wix or click the link in the description. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to break this up into two different types of production and that is fulfillment and independent production. So fulfillment is where you work with a different company and you will send them like your sticker designs or your t-shirt designs and then they will create the product, they will store the product, they will ship the product, they deal with all of the front and back end stuff and then give you a cut of the profits. The benefit of this is that it's incredibly easy. This is one of those things that a lot of YouTubers do. The downside is that you pay for it. You do not get as much of a profit off of what you're selling as if you were doing independent production. I'm sure there's an actual word for this, but I just call it independent production because you are producing things independently. The main benefit of making and producing your own stuff and then selling it online is that you receive 100% of the profits, which is really cool, but you also have 100% of the risk and you have to deal with all of the storage, uh, the shipping, and the manufacturing. So if you make a design and then make 100 stickers and then order those, but you you don't sell any, then you've just lost the money that you put in for those stickers. Whereas if you were doing fulfillment um, and none of your stickers sell, you lose nothing. So it's really kind of a risk first reward assessment. The other main drawback uh, to working with fulfillment is that you have no control over quality. Whatever shirts your fulfillment company is printing your designs on, those are the ones people are going to get and you have no say in the matter. You also have very little control over price. Next we're going to talk about independent production. Generally um, artists fall into two different categories, there is traditional and digital, and then there's also like mixed media, but we're not going to talk about that. One of the benefits of traditional art is that you end up having a singular original piece, and that one individual piece can be sold for a higher price because it is one of a kind. Like an NFT in real life. JK, don't buy NFTs, they will destroy the planet. The power that it takes to generate an NFT. However, if you are going to sell your original pieces, take scans and pictures and digitize that nonsense. Because the benefit of having your traditional work in a digital format means that you can do all of the fun digital things without having to worry about producing a one-time product. And now here's some really fun things that you can do with your fancy art. Turn it into a sticker. Turn it into a pin. Make some limited edition prints or posters. Sign them. Art books. Patches, mugs, t-shirts, apparel. I have done most of these, some through fulfillment and some through independent production. We have also made Echo and Chewy pins, which I will most likely sell as a set just to clear out the last of our inventory. We produce those with a local company, so on top of ordering things online, you can also look for local companies who do production. The benefit of doing that is that you actually have a place that you can go into and talk with the people who are making stuff for you. The downside is that you're not going to get the same dirt cheap prices as you would if you were just ordering from an online retailer. The next thing I want to talk about, if you are a fancy fun time internet artist, is digital downloads. Selling your files for small amounts of money. This is something that I really want to recommend to any digital artist. Sell your files! You can sell your art as phone wallpaper, screensavers, uh, desktop backgrounds. Fan art is your friend. It's the um, artist equivalent to making how-to videos on YouTube. On YouTube, there's this thing where people will make their own content, but they will also make some how-to videos. And what those do is that they draw in a new audience who are searching how to do things. So for example, if you have no idea who I am, hello, I'm Echo, and this is like the first video of my channel you've ever seen, you now have your foot in the door of my channel. Please come in, watch some other videos, subscribe maybe. If it's a great way to kind of pull in new people. And when you are a fun time internet artist, fan art 
is that. It's a way for people to get their foot in the door of your content. Because people aren't going to be searching for art by your name here, they're going to be searching for Naruto fan art and then find you. And if they like your style and they like your work, then they will be more interested in you and your stuff as a person. You can sell your artwork as phone wallpapers or screensavers or desktop backgrounds. You can sell your files as printables, print it yourself posters or print at home coloring pages. It's almost like leaving the fulfillment up to the customer and charging only for the creative work. One of the benefits to posting cross-platform is searchability. It's incredibly important to diversify your portfolio and your catalog across the internet. However, it's also very important to have a hub for your central catalog. That way, if you need to, you can give people a single link to every other branch of your work. So now we're going to go jump on the computer, we're going to make a Wix website, and we're going to connect all of our fulfillment and independent production together in one place. To the internet! <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're going to do is sign up for an account. This is usually pretty straightforward. There's roughly three ways you can do this using a Facebook account, a Gmail account, or a general email. I always sign up with Google if there's an option, it's just super streamlined, you can just click your email, make sure you're logged in. They will send you an email so you can verify your account, that will just show up and click it. You probably know how to do this, I'm guessing you've signed up for other services before. So once you're logged in, you're going to want to click My Sites or Website Copy, and that will allow you to have a look at what websites you've already made or create a new one. We're going to start from scratch because I want to show you the process from the beginning to the end and also because I'm not super happy with my current online store so we're gonna revamp it. Now although making a Wix website is something that could be feasibly done in a couple hours I tend to spend at least a full day working on this because I am trained as a graphic designer and so I put a lot of thought and work into my design. That's what my degree is in, that's what I'm trained to do. So once you choose what type of online store you're going to be creating you will have the option for the ADI creator or the website editor. The ADI creator is essentially a robot butler so you can just answer a bunch of questions and it will slap together a website for you that looks very good. However, you don't have as much control as you do with the Wix editor. With the editor, you'll pick a template as a basic layout and then adjust the design to fit your brand. Personally, I never take a template from the front page. These are the ones that everyone sees first, so what I like to do is just kind of pick a random page in the middle and then go from there. I actually managed to find this template by searching for the word art, which gave me a bunch of really pretty portfolios that would also make really nice stores. I also kind of like that this one has a blog. I always wanted a blog. When you're previewing Wix websites, you'll often see up in the left-hand corner a monitor and a phone. This is so that you can check the layout on mobile. Always check your layout on mobile. Almost everyone accesses the internet using their phone. So you wanna make sure that you like the design that's going to be presented to them if they go to your website on mobile. This is another thing that we'll get more into as we start editing. Also, before we get into branding, Wix has a logo maker. So if you don't have one or you just wanna throw one together really quick, I did this in like, two minutes, and if you don't like the auto-generated ones, you can work with a professional through the Wix logo maker. If nothing else, it's a really great way to generate ideas for a logo, and then you can do it yourself. Let's take a moment to go over the basic functions of the Wix editor. Here at the top we have the add tool. This is where you can add text, image buttons, decorative elements. If there is an element you want to add to your page, this is probably where you will find it. Under that we have the menus and pages button. This is for navigation purposes while you're editing. If you're editing the homepage and you wanna go edit the blog or the gallery, this is where you click to go to the different pages. Under that is the theme manager. This is where you will set typefaces and fonts for the overall website. Next, we have the background tool. This, of course, lets you design your background. They have tons of stock photos and patterns if you don't know what you want your background to look like, and you can even make your background a video. Next, we have the add apps tool. I'll go a little bit more in depth later in the video, but this is essentially a section where you can add extra functionality to your website. Next, we have the Media tab. This is where you can easily access files that you've uploaded. Next, we have the Blog tool. As you can imagine, this is how you operate your blog. This is where you will access, manage, and create your posts. Under that, we have the Store tool. Same thing, just lets you organize and manage your store, all of your products. This is where you go when you want to set up payment methods and shipping rules. Very useful. Next, we have the Content Manager. This tool is kind of like a way to change the template settings themselves so that you can add more pages with specific themes and layouts already set. So if you're making and editing a lot of pages, this would be very useful. 
Ascend Business Tools. Ascend by Wix is a business tool that lets you get a lot more in depth into kind of the, the back end part of your website. So the marketing, the SEO, finances, your site analytics, um, your business number, things like that. And then at the very bottom, that is where you find your layers tool. This is a very useful tool if things just aren't showing up in the right order, something is in front of something that it shouldn't be, this is where you will go to change that. So now let's briefly talk about graphic design and branding. I have a pretty strong personal brand that I've had for quite a few years now. I use a lot of stripes, a lot of red and black, and my typefaces are almost always condensed, meaning that they are tall and skinny. I have a red and black heart that functions as a logo. I also have a small bunny character that is essentially my mascot, as well as my cute little drawing of myself. I should probably make a video talking about branding more in depth, but a lot of it is just picking a combination of colors or a pattern or a specific aesthetic and committing to it. What you want to try and do is set up some iconography to essentially be the face of your brand. It's your style, it's your aesthetic. I've also made a more in-depth tutorial about how to use the Wix editor in a previous video. I will link that somewhere on the screen and if you want you can check that out. So now let's take a second and talk about web for mobile. When you're showing someone your website on a phone versus on a desktop, you have a lot less real estate to work with, so you have to apply a different set of design philosophies. When you're working with the Wix editor, you always start with the desktop first and then work on mobile from there. It's a lot easier to simplify a complex design than it is to make a simple design more complex. Because I post a lot of content across the internet, one of the things that was very important for me to have on my website was a social media page. This is where I'm putting links to all of my other platforms. This way, if I ever need to, I can just send someone to this one website and that will link them to everything else. Make sure that if you're going to add a link to anything on your page that you preview it and click it to make sure that it's going to the right place. Always test your links. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about adding a store to your website. This is a very straightforward process. We're gonna click add to site, store, add an online store. This will add a lot more functionality to your website. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is manage your products. On your product dashboard, there's going to be a bunch of stand-in products. This is just so that you can see what the store looks like when it's filled. And we don't need any of those, so let's just go ahead and delete all of that. From the store dashboard, I have the option to create a new product. We're gonna go ahead and click that, and it's going to give us an option between a digital file or a physical product. So I'm working on a coloring book right now, so this site is actually going to function as a way for me to sell the individual pages, so if people don't want to buy the entire coloring book, they can just download the pages and print them at home. So for the digital downloads of these, I'm going to be including a couple different file types, including a transparent PNG, a Procreate file, and a Photoshop file. If you're using an Apple or Mac computer, you should be able to just right click and compress the folders and that will turn them into a zip folder. However, if you are not using an Apple or Mac computer, I recommend WinZip or WinRAR. I have used both of those in the past. They work perfectly fine. Once you've uploaded your file, you'll need to add a name, a price, and a description. Another thing I recommend doing is in the additional info section, Section, adding the file types that are available in this download. And there we have it! My digital downloads are ready for the world. I still have to do this like 23 more times, but this is a start. Now we're gonna set up some payment methods. If you go to settings, accept payment, you can connect credit and debit cards as well as PayPal and manual payments if you wanna take checks and cash. I don't, so I'm just going to be connecting PayPal and bank transactions. When you connect your PayPal, you're just going to need to enter your email address so you can log in. However, you are going to need a business PayPal account because this is intended for collecting payments from goods and services. It's just taxed differently, so it has to be organized accordingly. Luckily, we'll be given the option to convert your personal PayPal into a business PayPal. Personally, I recommend having a separate PayPal for business transactions. So that's what I do. So when you do set up payment methods, you're going to have to give your tax information, so your social security number or your business's TIN number, as well as your bank information for deposits. And now we're gonna talk about embedded fulfillment. If you go to your store tab and click add store elements, and then just scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that Wix has an additional apps section. I love this thing so very much. If you do not want to create products yourself and instead just want to work with fulfillment, the Wix app market is an incredible hidden gem. Here you will find tons of free apps that you can plug into your site for things like marketing, selling online, organizing your taxes. If you want to maximize the functionality of your website, definitely look around the Wix app market. There's all kinds of good stuff in there. If you're wanting to work with a fulfillment company, definitely look through the apps in the sell online section. I'm just going to be using Printful because it's one of their top recommended. So if you're gonna go this route, you're gonna have to sign up for an account either with Facebook, Google, Apple, 
or an email, and then answer some pretty simple questions about the kind of merchandise you need. From there, you'll have lots of different options for base products, t-shirts, mugs, that sort of thing. For this, I'm just gonna make a really basic t-shirt because I realized I don't really have one with just my bunny on the front. The nice thing about this setup is that I can also add a pattern to the sleeve, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my heart on the side. Now you too can have my heart on your sleeve. After that, you'll set your retail price. I'm gonna try and keep these relatively low. The main purpose of setting this up is mainly as an example. So this shirt is going to be limited edition. It's only going to be on the store for maybe a month. And then after that, it's just gonna be gone forever. So if you want this design, be sure to check out my website. I'll put a link in the description. The next thing we need to do is set up all of our shipping parameters. So if we jump on over to settings and shipping, we can go ahead and manage our fulfillment services. Because at the time I don't have any physical products, I don't really have to worry so much about shipping. So because of that, I'm only going to be listing domestic shipping and not international. The shipping settings that you choose are going to end up being very unique based on your shipping needs. I'm currently working on another video about packaging and shipping, so we'll talk about that in a later video. And then the last thing you're going to want to do before you publish your website is to connect a business plan. That way you can accept payments and connect your website to a custom domain. Hopefully at this point you have clicked preview and observed every little piece of your website to make sure that it is exactly the way that you want it, and you are now ready to publish. And we now have an online store. How cool is that? I will be bringing back my online store in 2022. Oh god, that's sneaking up on us. Okay. I think that's all I have for you today. Sorry if this video was a bit much. I just wanted to try and jam pack as much information in there as I could. Next month, I'm going to make a video that goes a little bit more depth into independent production and preparing your space for all of the things that go into creating, storing, organizing, and shipping all of your products. Because it's a lot. But it doesn't have to be. However, this time, I am only selling stickers and small things that are easy to store. Thank you to my patrons for making videos like this possible, and thank you to Wix for sponsoring it. Couldn't do it without you. Once again, this video is sponsored by Wix. If you would like to make your own Wix e-commerce site, then you can go to wix.com slash echo store Wix or click the link in the description. I'm going to give you a thousand awesome points for making it all the way to the end of this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you later. Goodbye. Look at how adorable this mug is. This was a Christmas gift from my sister.